she was the one who set him apart, made him different, unique. The only thing of his kind, like no other man. The illustrated man. Where the lions live. Right there. Well, I was the one that said it. Oh, yeah, right there where the lions live, down in Africa. My name is Bob Jacobs. I'm going to take you to Dark Carnival. You can see the lights off there, across time, like glittering insects flying in chill autumn air. Dark Carnival sets up once a lifetime here in October country. The hills are fog, people whisper by like leaves of fire. Close your eyes and come this way, down the sideshow of the mind. Hey everybody, welcome back. Second Eric here. Acid Archive Diaries number 31. We got a special one for you today. Tis the season to be spooky. And with that said, I'm probably running this thread pretty dry by this point. I think a lot of people may be burnt out on it. I'm the last one standing. <laughs> but it all makes sense, right? Because this is pretty much the book that is my guidebook and um, has been for a long time. And I don't reference it all the time like I used to, but it always is kind of nice to see what editions are in the second edition now ever since I picked it up. But even over top of this, I'd say Rate Your Music has been the the big savior for me. This, that's the holy, that's the site I worship the most. Um, you can always find these offshoot lists from different people, uh, finding stuff that they've added to, you know, say, albums that weren't released on CD, all-time favorites, and everybody's top favorites are always different. And some people have gone out of their way to uh, list the whole Asset Archive entries on Rate Your Music. Uh, some people have done that on Discogs too, so it's, uh, I think lists in a lot of ways do help, and then you can sample clips online, and it's always a nice interaction, but yeah, this book has always been a great healing power <laughs> as far as just uh, going down the psych rabbit hole, as we call it. Let's just deep dive into uh, the U.S. obscurities, and this is certainly one of them, man. So, like I said, you know, Halloween season's coming up, and the older I get, I think I, it's kind of like a comfort thing, I guess, just, uh, you know, with the transition to fall, the cooler air moving through, there's always this kind of, like, lurking creepiness in the air or something, and uh, going alongside with this kind of music uh, totally fits for October, and uh, this is one that I, I think I'm going to do a live stream coming up with this one, but also one paired with it. So uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be kind of near Halloween-ish, maybe afterwards. I think Halloween lands on like a Thursday. Maybe I'll do it the following day. Who knows? Whenever I have a moment. But today we're talking about one called uh, Ray Bradbury's Dark Carnival. And the artist is Robert Jacobs, otherwise known as Bob Jacobs, as he claims on here. Uh, it's, I think it's listed in the Acid Archives as Bob Jacobs as well. Um, alphabetically, had to look up Jacobs. It's on the Tower label, which is kind of an interesting note. And this is certainly one that gets, I mean, there's a few albums on Tower. I forget the names of all of them. Uh, what's the one, Teddy, Teddy and the Patches or something? Well, I think that's a Susie Cream Cheese band, but there's a, there's a Teddy band. And then there's like um, several other like kind of strange solo artists on Tower, kind of hidden within the catalog. It's also got a Canadian release as well on Capitol Label, which Capitol owns Tower at this time. And I think this came out in 69, but it definitely sounds a little, maybe like a year prior this got recorded. And so Ray Bradbury, if you don't know, he's one of those American authors that you always hear about, uh, very influential in the sort of dark sci-fi fantasy uh, short story collections, oftentimes. Uh, from what I recall, yeah, short stories, novels, screenplays, talks a little more, a little bit about him on the back here, as well as a little bit about Bob, and um, Robert does all the arrangements on here, and I'm assuming he does the vocals, 
Um, doesn't say who does the vocals, but I'm pretty sure it's him. It says musicians are the autumn people. I couldn't find any info on that one, on who they might be. Probably just some session players. But uh, I might read a little bit of the Ray Bradbury uh, liner notes here. It says, this record is the result of a thank you note which Bob Jacobs sent me from Europe in the form of the tune October Country. I liked it so well that Bob wrote an entire album around various stories in my book in less than a month. Now, some while later, I am happy to find that Tower Records is releasing the album under the title of Dark Carnival. First, it means that Bob Jacobs, a fine writer and performer, is on his way. Second, I'm pleased that this young man has reached out to capture my stories and song. I have no convenient tag or label to pin on the kind of music you will find in this collection, just as each of my stories in October Country live their own particular lives and truths in their particular way. The songs based on these stories range from folk ballad to hard rock, and the emotions move from light to dark, from humor to terror. It's a pretty good way to describe it. Uh, Bob Jacobs is even harder to label. He writes poems, songs, stories, sings, acts, and directs. But above all, he even amidst such songs of mystery and fright as these, is, like myself, optimistic about mankind's future. In any event, here is here he is for you to judge on your own. I hope he scares you. I hope he delights you. So, yeah, I think Ray Bradbury, I think he passed away in, like, early 2000s or something. Um, lived a pretty good long life, I think. I actually have not read any of his literature, but um, this kind of makes me want to, after um, knowing this album for so long, I think I've owned this since maybe 2018, 2019, around there. But um, this used to be fairly cheap to pick up on. You could find copies for 20, 25 bucks around there. It's a definite sleeper on the Tower label, but now I think it's um, gotten, the word's been spread a little bit about this one. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I captured what you can read there for all the different tracks here, but uh, stylistically, what we have, it opens up with uh, kind of a creepy intro. Bob Jacobs kind of leading you down this kind of dark corridor, it sounds like, and sort of leading you into October Country. And a lot of it, funny enough, it's not necessarily all creepy stylistically. It's got a lot of uh, sort of elegant Baroque pop mixed with psych pop. And with the psych pop elements, there's a lot of different sound effects moving throughout. Um, some of it even reminds me of some of those like Disney records back in the early 60s with some of those wind sound effects and, you know, creaky doors and stuff. Um, but it's all in good fun. I mean, this is a really fun listen. Then you got tracks like The Emissary. It says a bedridden boy named Martin who sends his dog out to bring back his friend, Miss Haight, who was killed in the car wreck. Um, it's got some interesting arrangements on there and it's got some cool fuzz guitar. Kind of an odd mix, really the way it was mixed and engineered. Uh, the Wind, The Small Assassin. I'd say in the middle of the album with tracks like Homecoming and The Illustrated Man. Um, kind of dips into a little more of that Baroque pop side. Uh, you got some harpsichord. I happen to love harpsichord. Uh, I know a lot of people, that's not really for them with psych pop and Baroque pop, but I think it's, uh, it's kind of cool. It gives it a lot more class to it, a lot of richness to some of the pop songs, but um, if it's too classical oriented, maybe I maybe I check out, but uh, oftentimes it, it links pretty well with um, albums like this, I would say, or The Left Bank, um, amongst many others. Then you got another big highlight here, The Jar. On, it's like track three on side two. He does this kind of spoken sing-along kind of thing uh, all throughout, and it's got some pretty intense things happening with um, phasing effects and like I said a lot of those uh, Disney sort of theatrical sound effects moving throughout and it is very theatrical the way that Bob sort of orchestrates and pushes out these sort of tunes and it makes sense right I mean you see a lot of bands and artists like this sort of taking those vaudeville uh, novelty kind of tricks and but I think in a lot of ways this works out pretty well it, it checks out pretty good um, compared to a lot of records that throw like that one throwaway. Um, but there there might be one of those on here, which is kind of a throwback to that 20s, you know, sort of kazoo sounding tracks. I think it's the one after the jar. There was an old woman. 
and then it has a reprise of the October Country, um, kind of bringing it all, you know, circling back to where it started. And it says, prepare an emotional trip down the sideshow of your mind. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think it's got some cool, cool things happening here. I do wish some of the sound effects and some of the moods this album takes you in. I wish it was a little more on the creepy side. The creep factor is kind of light in a lot of spots, except for maybe the jar, which might have uh, more of those elements we're kind of looking for. Folks from all around would come to stare at his jaw and imagine everything fancy and weird. Oh! Juke saw a kitten like the one that he drowned, and Jadu the black man saw a voodoo god dance with Charlie Nodden. I could see for some people it might be a little too uh, bizarre, kind of merging the different themes with uh, all these short stories mixed with uh, sort of the psychedelic era, a lot like um, Poe Through the Glass Prism, records like that, using Edgar Allan Poe poems alongside music, um, word for word. Um, you get some interesting results, though. And um, I do have a couple albums to compare it to, and then one that I don't own anymore, but I just, uh, I thought of this one today. This one's a lot like the uh, Bob Jacobs album, Del Shannon. I think uh, Chris Kibler showed this one for an ass archive entry. The Further Adventures of Charles Westover, which was Dell's real name. This is very much Baroque pop. Got some eerie moments in here too. And uh, vocal styling, he definitely sounds like sort of late 20s, early 30s, um, a lot like Bob Jacobs does. You know, it sounds like they got a lot of ambition and a lot of experience behind them. So uh, I'd say this is very similar to uh, the Bob Jacobs record, minus the whole, I mean, even with the concept sort of thing going on, as well as this one, so sort of that whole concept of your mind kind of thing that with uh, Mind Odyssey by the aggregation and the fact that, you know, these guys played at Disneyland. Wow. I mean, that's just kind of bonkers but <laughs> um, I'd say yeah it's sort of that whole idea of the circus of your mind because going to the carnival you know thinking of it like a dark carnival dark circuses um, you know just going into a circus ride and you get the room full of mirrors it's like reality is just kind of warped and you're just transported into this whole different world and I think that's what um, Bob's really trying to convey in the music a little bit this also comes with a little lyric insert, which is kind of nice. I didn't even discover this, <laughs> that it had the insert till like a year after I owned this, which is kind of funny because it matches the sort of uh, color tone that the inside of the sleeve has. So I, it's just kind of hidden in there, but um, it's kind of cool that they printed out all the lyrics here. I don't know if they're just ep excerpts of the short stories or if they're sort of uh, converted some way or translated differently but I thought maybe I could read one of them here just to kind of give you an idea of where he's coming from the illustrated man the illustrated man September carnival painted man sun sweating turtleneck tattooed man came walking through the summer of my mind fantasy painted him pictures of living skin sorcery blended from night bright faces shining pink time was the artist's ink future things painted in light um, so it just kind of gives you a little bit of like, uh, you know, some of the descriptions that um, are all displayed here. So, yeah, unfortunately, I can't find a whole lot of info on Bob Jacobs himself uh, prior or after this one. The best way you can come across these things, finding some info or relatives leaving comments in the comments section of uh, videos of this record. And I think there was a niece or a Grand, uh, granddaughter or something I guess that he had become a retired professor and wrote several books I, I think he became like a more acclaimed author under the name Bob Jacobs um, but uh, I guess if you seek it out hard enough on the web I guess you can find some of his books that he published and I guess he was really inspired by uh, Bradbury's style um, obviously I mean to make a whole concept about it so uh, it's a pretty special record, really. Um, if you guys like those kind of quirky, Baroque-flavored, pop-site kind of efforts um, with some interesting sound effects, 
one and done kind of concept records like this, this is definitely one to check into. Uh, and there is a full album upload as well, so um, you guys can definitely check it out. I'll, of course, leave some samples in here. And I think we're ready to check the entry, which I have not read, but I uh, bookmarked it though. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Bob Jacobs, Ray Bradbury's Dark Carnival, 1969. Tower, it's got an insert and it gets the one rarity. The spoken intro to this album gives you an idea of what you're in for. The works of Ray Bradbury, specifically the short stories from his collection, The October Country, turned into music sort of in the same fashion as Paul Klee's art and the album by the National Gallery. It's definitely one I haven't listened to in a while. Some of this is soft AM pop, but there are some Baroque pop songs with occasional fuzz guitar and plenty of creepy moments. The most memorable song is The Jar, in which Jacobs recites the poem in a weird poetic speak-sing style over a series of eerie and intense sound effects. Uh, Jacob's singing is a bit overwrought throughout, though it's not entirely out of place. Bradbury's work is intense and imaginative enough to make for a lot of interesting lyrics. This is an unusual album that won't appeal to everyone, but it's pretty cool and will really be enjoyed by the right listener. Bradbury wrote the liner notes for this album. This is by Aaron Malinsky. Um, so there you have it. Um, if you guys don't want to listen to it, if you want to hear it sort of near Halloween, I do plan to do a live stream of this one back to back with sort of another sort of spooky themed kind of hard heavy psych kind of record uh, alongside that. We'll probably play this one second, but uh, that's the plan so far. But um, yeah, it's definitely one to dive into. It's kind of a sleepy title. I think that's all I got for now. So take care and we'll see you soon.